Hello and welcome to the 2014 Utica Home Check Series for our seventh race here at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal. The first of two Canadian tracks we'll be going to, and it should be a great race today. We're going road racing for the third time this year. But before we get to the race itself, let's tell you our starting grid and get you caught up on the news in the Utica Home Track Series. First up, Derek Pemberton, who drove the 65 car for a majority of this season so far, is out of the ride due to an injury. He'll be replaced for the next four events by Don T by sorry Don Pemberton, and Cloyd Pemberton is slated to fill in for the rest of the season. Don Pemberton has failed to qualify for the race today, however, so better luck to him next week. Another driver that is vacating the ride, though not due to injury, James Silverfox in the number 19. Silver Fox has decided to uh, lessen the amount of series he's in, so he's decided to pull out, which is alright. We uh, wish him the best in his other series, but currently we are unsure of what will happen to Charles Sanford in the 9. The 9 car of Sanford will run this event. Silver Fox attempted Montreal, but failed to qualify. And lastly, Daniel Voiles has shut down the number 81 team. He stated that the lack of starts has uh, hurt them financially. So the Royal Rumble winner will not be driving it until the final race in Myrtle Beach. Until then, the number 81 rights have been sold to Reggie Lee and SNR Racing. So see how he can do. He made the race today. That's what's going on in the Utica Home Track Series. Now let's go racing. On pole was car number 61 of Anthony McCurry. Now the 2014 season, not been good to Anthony McCurry, but he is starting to bounce back. He's gotten the pole out of track that you would say that he's good at. He's a good road course racer, but Jake Williams is going to get by underneath, and there's Alex Tanker in the 44, who is a local to this track. He is from Canada. Not sure if actually this is his home track, but he is one of the home... Oh, oh, oh! Three cars involved in a wreck. Two cars crashed into that wall hard, and Anthony McCurry is smoking, so I think he has a terminal issue. Ouch! Montoya just plows right into the 44 car after McCurry just runs it way too wide and that's going to take three potential competitors for the win out of this race early on. There's Vladimir Petrov back in the number 98. He returns as Alex Allen has decided to withdraw himself from the ride. The 98 car is now only going to be running a limited schedule and oh no this is going to be a limited start for him as he has a mechanical issue in the number 98 machine. He's going to come to a stop here in the turn. Reggie Lee is around as well. Let's take a look at what happened there. We had an incident on lap one. So what happened here, the two car of Ryan DiPetrio spins out. Sam Young does as well. And I think here comes Reggie Lee in the 81 car for SNR Racing. He slides as well. Not sure what happened there. There might be some there might be some oil on the racetrack from practice. But Jake Williams in the zero would end up in the race lead. He made a start at the Bethesda ring, and that was his best start so far. So we know he is a road race ace. He also ran Utica Rallycross Series competition for half a year and did great at that. So he has a chance of winning the race today. So best of luck to the Zero Machine. He already has a huge lead over second place. Well, we had an incident lap two. Jerry Guerra in the seven makes some contact. And he's going to go into the wall along with Dylan Young, Matt Evans, and others. He would get the short end of the stick of this, though. He would have a mechanical issue because of that. He would go out of the event. Colin Bartel has been downtrodden all season long. He has not been able to make a race since Bristol. But finally, the 22 car returns to the track. So Colin Bartel, happy to say he's finally on the racetrack. So congratulations to the 22 machine. Hopefully this is the start of a pickup in the season. Incident lap number three. Nikki Allen in the 90. More trouble for the Allen Racing Team. She gets into the 26 of Julian Kennebliss Jr. There's PJ Williams, Sean Angel, and some other drivers involved. As that is going to hurt a bunch of their days. Incident lap four. Same turn. Max Watson makes contact with the wall. And Cassandra Renzi piles in. Colin Bartell, a good, good avoidance for him. As he is not going to be taken out that early. Jake Williams would go down pit road on lap number six for pit stops. This is not a particularly long event, so you only need to make one stop. That would give the number 95 of Robert Piet the race lead. Known as the Flying Dutchman, he has not had such a good year as uh, his only start yielded a relatively poor finish. But he is currently running in second, and well, actually now in first since he passed the leader. So he has a chance to maybe go to victory lane and 
Get that number 95 car to victory. Infant, lap number 6. Momo Akari in car number 11. Slides in that same turn. And that car's going to go around. Matt Evans would go around as well, so both of them would uh, be held up a little bit. Infant, lap 7. Sam Crawford comes off pit road, but a little too overzealous with the way he came off pit road. He's going to end up uh, sliding off as pit exit and make some contact with Matt Duell. Jake Williams in the zero would take the race lead once again as Robert Piet would have to come down pit road. Piet is right on his bumper, but Jake Williams leads the lap as they come up on the lap car of Jonathan Benton's in the 35. So right now it looks like a two-car race up front between two road race aces. See what can happen up there. There is the number six of Nicholas Guerra. Now Nicholas Guerra is the only driver to have qualified for all seven races of the schedule so far and he's running well in 10th place. So this will be a good point today for him as long as he keeps that car on track. So congratulations to him. Jake Williams has caught. Jonathan Benton is trying to lap him. Now this could give Robert Piet an opportunity to get by. And now there's another lap car. There's William Duncan. Duncan is trying to uh, stay on the lead lap as well. They go through the first couple of turns. Can Jake Williams clear Jonathan Benton? And it looks like he will as Benton gets off track. And that's going to put a wedge between he and Robert Piet. Got a spotlight the 77 of Makoto Iguchi, who's having a great run sitting in sixth place. In fact, all the enraged cars are in the show this week. So they have their road course setup styled in. As the same thing happened when they went to the Bethesda ring. See if Makoto Iguchi can maybe pull something off and catch up to those leaders. We had an instant lap 13, however. Speak of the enraged cars, Cassandra Renzi in her first start is going to get turned around and make some contact with the wall in that epic mealtime machine. So it looks like Renzi is going to have to gain a couple positions as she lost. Instant lap 14. There is Nicholas Guerra, drives it way too hard and crashes into Henry Nova. Henry Nova actually would be considered his competition as they're both near the top of the standings. As Joe Samaniego, we look at. Car number 53, he sits in 7th place, and I do want to mention that car in front of him, that's Steven Carter. So all three Allen cars made the race as well. But Joe Samaniego, winner at the Bethesda ring, having a great run today. There is the number 09 machine of Karen Minazuki sitting comfortably in the top 5. She also made the race at the Bethesda ring, and seems to be a little bit better on these road courses. For a driver that wasn't even scheduled to run this year, she's actually been doing a very good job as a replacement for Ryan Raso. She's scheduled to run every race except the uh, Rockingham event in the United Kingdom. Ryan Raso will return for that. Here's Sean Angel in car number 14. He is Canada's hero. Canada loves Sean Angel. They can't get enough of him. And he's doing relatively well today in 11th place. So showing the fellow Canucks how it's done as he is having an excellent run in the 14 and a significantly improved effort from his previous attempts in the series this year. Here is the 60 of Trek Togger who's also been having a great year. He's been consistently in the top 10 and he's had some great runs on the road courses like at Watkins Glen and the Bethesda Ring. He's hoping that he can have a great run today. He sits 9th overall as the Rabotech machine faring well on the circuit. However, I believe John Lasko and Megan Curley both failed to qualify, so he is alone out there. Incident lap 21. Matthias Paiva crashes into Matt Duell. Gets Henry Nova, and oh no, unfortunate luck as the 60 of Trek Togger will get involved as well. Let's go on board with Matt Duell. Make some contact with the wall. He almost flips it over, and he's going to come to a screeching halt. Here's on board with the Brazilian driver. See what he saw, and ah, he just gets sandwiched. It is a shame for these four, as all of them were having good days, hoping to get a good points run out of it. We also got to mention car number 37, Sam Young. We mentioned him at the end of last week's race. He was running second. He's running ninth today. But Sam Young has been keeping some consistent runs in these past couple of races, so if he just keeps it up, he may be able to catch up and put himself in the championship hunt later in the season. But Sam Young's got a long way to go, and with Nicholas Guerra running so well, he could be difficult to catch. But, Sam Young, having a great effort in this bizarrely painted number 37. But, at the end of it all, Jake Williams was not going to give up that race lead to Robert Piet. Coming down the line, Jake Williams will get his first career Utica Home Track Series win in that zero machine. 
And it's going to be a great point save for him. He also wins the Rookie of the Race Award, which will net him an extra five points in the Rookie of the Year battle as he both won the race and was the highest placing rookie. So congratulations to Jake Williams and that single car Dunkin' Donuts team. Here are your race results. Jake Williams on top, followed by Robert Piet. Colin Bartell in third place with a great effort, followed by Jean Gene Sanford, Karen Minazuki, Joe Samaniego, Makoto Iguchi, Nicholas Guerra in eighth, Sean Angel in the top ten, and so is Max Watson, the German driver. They're followed by Debbie Myers, who also had a great run along with her teammate Robert Piet. Sam Young, Sam Crawford, Cassandra Renzi, Pichu London, Dion Scott, Thomas Beatty, Ray Takeda, Donnie DiPetrio, and Brock McMahon. A lot of these guys are road race aces we didn't really get to talk about today, but they all had great runs too. William Duncan was the last car in the lead lap. Oh, I was actually wrong. Megan Curley did make the show. Um, she was the first car lap down. Andy Thomas, Dylan Young, Momo Akari, Matt Evans, Stephen Carter, and Jonathan Benton all finished the race a lap down. Togger and Duel went out of the, sh the event. 31st was Mateus Paiva. He was out, but Charles Sanford and Henry Nova both finished the race, albeit three and four laps off the pace. P.J. Williams, Reggie Lee, Julian Kennebles Jr., Nikki Allen, Anthony McCreary, Vladimir Petrov, and Gabriel Montoya all failed to finish the race, along with the final two drivers on track, Alex Tanker and Jerry Guerra. Now, let's take a look at what the point standings will look like following this event. Nicholas Guerra, 213, Ray Takeda, 166. So a huge gap over Ray Takeda, almost, I think, over a race. Annie Thomas is in third place, followed by Chris Dollarton, John Ciudino, Henry Nova. Joe Samaniego is going to get a huge points boost, followed by Trek Togger, Megan Curley, and William Duncan. Then we had Andrew Robinson, Kyle Corbett, Sam Young, Michael Aurelio, and Karen Minazuki all on the outside looking in. Joseph Bryant lost a couple spots this week, along with Zachary Robinson, Justin Capps, Joshua Michaels. Neil Evans rounds out the top 20. And with that, we take a look at the Rookie of the Year scannings. Chris Dollard is still on top, but Annie Thomas has caught up considerably. There's Joe Samaniego peeking his way in there, along with Henry Nova, Kyle Corbett, Karen Minazuki. Debbie Myers, Max Watson, Jake Williams moves up into the top 10, and Derek Pemberton, who is injured and not coming back this season, rounding it out. That has been your race at Montreal. Next week, we're going to be going to the Canadian Tire Circuit, otherwise known as MoSport, for the second of the two Canadian events in a row. Should be a great race, and we hope to join you there. Thank you for watching this installment of the Utica Home Track Series. We'll catch you next time.